This was commissioned, this work was commissioned by the uh, English cellist, uh, Julian Lloyd Webber, very good cellist. Uh, and he got, uh, uh, he got somebody in Beijing to commission it to be played and premiered there with their Beijing Symphony Orchestra. And it happened to be in the fall of uh, 2001, and I had, uh, I had never been to China, I, and I spent some time with uh, Julian working on the piece. Uh, cello concertos are notoriously difficult to balance, and it helps to have a very experienced player to help you uh, to get things in the right octave so that you can hear them. And we had worked on it. We had spent some time on it. I was very much looking forward to going to Beijing. I'd never been there. And then we had 9-11. That was September. And the concert in Beijing was going to be in October. And if anyone uh, will, re will probably remember, for about two months after 9-11, no one took any airplanes. And my family flatly refused to let me go. <laughs> so I didn't get to hear the premiere. The next time Julian played it was in Auckland, New Zealand. I didn't go there. <laughs> It was too far. Uh, the third time he played it was uh, in, um, in Edinburgh, I think, and I was on tour myself. So for one reason or another, I had never heard the piece played live. Now, eventually it was recorded, and I wasn't at the recording. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, it was a piece that had, uh, though I had put a lot into it, I had never heard it live. Now, it happened that uh, uh, there was a very fine cellist, Wendy Sutter. Uh, I knew her. She, we were, she was working on some, some work with me in New York, and she told me that Tan Dunn had done a concerto, uh, and she had played it uh, with the La Jolla Orchestra. And she, I said, well, do you want to hear the orchestra? I said, yeah, sure. She gave me the, the CD that they had a recording of the performance. It sounded terrific. I said, well, they sound very good. She said, well, they want me to play another concerto. Uh, why don't we play your concerto? And I said, well, it's... If we do, it'll be the American premiere. In fact, it'll be the North American premiere. And in fact, it'll be the first time I've ever heard it live. And uh, uh, I, I knew Steve as a very fine musician and that he would be conducting it. And he was enthusiastic. And so I said, great, I'm finally going to get to hear, hear a piece which is now six years old. I never got to hear it. It's like meeting one of your children and suddenly they're six years old and you missed everything else. <laughs> I've just come from a rehearsal, and I've heard it for the first time live. And uh, I must say that uh, the balances have, have held up very well. It's a little tough to tell from a recording because you can, with a recording, you can change balances, and and what it really sounds like in a concert hall may not be what you hear in the re in, in the concert hall. Uh, or what you hear in the recording is not what you hear in the concert hall. And I'm very pleased with the way it all sounds. The orchestra sounds terrific, and. I can hear the soloist and uh, all, the, all the kind of strategies for making it listenable and hearable uh, seem to have worked out pretty well. She comes from a tradition of playing. Uh, I mean, she's uh, uh, she studied with Rostropovich, has known some of the great cellists of, uh, of our time. Um, she was a Kurdish. She comes from a a venerable tradition of concert playing, and you hear it in her playing. Uh, 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 that's what happens when uh, it's a lineage that gets passed on from from uh, uh, the great professionals to their students, and then they become the masters, and it goes on and on. And that's how the the, the standards of, especially of string playing, but that also happens in wind playing too. I had a flute teacher who studied with a great flute teacher, and he studied with a great flute teacher, and whatever. Uh, I myself was not a great flutist, but, but, it, but it was passed down to me to the point where I could hear the sound was that sound. And uh, she has that sound. Uh, uh, it's an expressive sound, it's a rich sound, uh, and besides that, she's playing on a very fine instrument. And the combination of, uh, I've always felt with, uh, with, with Wendy Soto, when uh, I write for her, I have, we have her playing, we have her instrument, which is a uh, um, an instrument built in 1620. It's a, um, a, 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 it's a Mata Stradivarius instrument. It's a combination of the two great masters. Um, and then you have the, the player, you have the instrument, and you have the music. And when it comes together, it's a, it can be a wonderful thing. I've worked in a lot of mediums. Uh, uh, 
of course, so I've done a lot of opera and, and symphonic work and concertos and chamber music. And unlike, <coughs> uh, well, actually, there's a whole generation of composers who've also worked in film. Uh, the Russian composers all worked in film. That's how they made the living, whether it was Shostakovich or Prokofiev and uh, uh, Bernstein. And we've, there's a tradition in, in also uh, in this country of playing, uh, of working in film. Um, uh, where film music is not necessarily by the, um, the, the rather small community of people who work in Hollywood, but it can, has expanded now way beyond that. So that, uh, though there are terrific composers in Hollywood, actually, to be truthful, uh, but uh, now other composers who, uh, in the former times, would never have written film scores or writing them. And I'm one of them. Uh, Tin Dunn. Uh, the concerto that was done here, we were just talking about, it uh, won an Academy Award uh, for Crossing Tigers. So, uh, uh, and one of the things about writing for film uh, is that uh, we get to have uh, big orchestras and we get to do all kinds of things. And, and invariably, what's happened for me is uh, I've used uh, uh, film score writing as a time for uh, experimenting with sounds and with timbres and uh, uh, basically. Uh, uh, when I write a film score, no one really tells me how to do the orchestration. I do it myself. I can try all kinds of things. And for example, in uh, the Opera Appomattox, which was just premiered in San Francisco, there was a, a place towards the end of the opera where I needed a very special sound. Uh, it's the, the last uh, area about where the murders of the civil rights workers is described. And I needed a very scary orchestration. And I borrowed it from some from some, uh, t there were techniques that I had used in film scoring that I borrowed and put it right into the opera, and it sounds terrific. <laughs> and, and I can truly say, if ha had I not had that experience of writing in films, I wouldn't, ha I wouldn't have solved the problem in that way. I maybe have done it in a different way, but it, it worked very well. So that what I've been able to do is by working in a lot of different mediums, I allow the, uh, the things I learned in one medium to just flow into the next one, into the other one, it goes back and forth. I love writing music, and um, if I, c I don't let a day pass without writing music if I can help it. Uh, and it can, I, I take on projects that many other people might not do because they don't have time, but I figure there's always time to do something I want to do. Right now, I, I've been getting up early in the morning and writing music for a, uh, a play that's not going to be played till next summer in the park in New York, it's the uh, staging of the Bacchae of Euripides. Um, I've been getting up in the morning and writing early and writing choral music for this play. And meanwhile, I'm working on uh, coming here and doing this. And uh, I find time to do things that I want to do. Uh, I also feel that uh, I've been very fortunate to live in a time when there's so many talented uh, directors and uh, performers, uh, 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 choreographers, uh, writers. Uh, I, I'm inspired by their work and I'm drawn to it. And that's one of the reasons why I'm working in so many mediums. I'm very uh, happy working with this orchestra. Uh, I, uh, it's not the, I, I was introduced to them through a recording of a concert that was done a couple years ago. And I, I knew that the level would be good. Uh, I know that Steve is a musician. Steve Schick is a wonderful uh, musician. Uh, and uh, I think he's going to, uh, uh, I think he has a big a career as a conductor too. He's al already established himself as one of the foremost percussionists in the world. And uh, you can see that in the, the precision of his conducting, that this is a guy who really understands rhythm very well. And uh, so I particularly feel, uh, I feel particularly secure with him, with this, this kind of piece where the, rhythm, the rhythmic uh, combinations can be very intricate and sometimes a little subtle, and his right on top of it, but the orchestra's right with him. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, you know, one of the things, I don't know if, maybe this won't get into this, but one of the things I like about this orchestra is not, it's not a union orchestra, so that <laughs> if you run 15 minutes over time, it's okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know that you want to put that in this, but that is one of the, uh, when you're talking about you know, uh, we're talking about amateurs in the best sense of the word, people who are playing for the love of playing. And if they need to stay a little bit longer to finish, uh, to get a piece right, they do it. 
but you don't find that in some in some professional workers and I'm not uh, saying that the prof professional workers are very very good but um, when it's break time it's break time and that's <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah.